What's going on everyone and welcome back to my channel and the reviews I want to go over today are the documentaries that I missed from last year in 2021. You know the award season is in full effect and a lot of uh, films are getting nominated and so I wanted to kind of catch up on all the ones that could be in awards consideration while also having critical acclaim and just people talking about them and I missed a lot of them so I figured I would just kind of go over a bunch of them here today in a group uh, review. So I'll just do one after the other. Usually documentaries don't take me too long to explain. So that's why I figured I just put four in the same video. So you guys don't have to click on four individual ones for these documentaries. But here are some of the uh, documentaries that I missed from last year. The St uh, the Sparks Brothers, uh, directed by Edgar Wright. We have the Anthony Bourdain film, uh, Roadrunner, a film about Anthony Bourdain. We have Val, uh, which is about Val Kilmer and his kind of like home video uh, days and just kind of like a, a compilation of just like his life and his career um and then summer of soul is uh uh directed by quest love and this one tells the story of the harlem culture festival uh in 1969 where there was like 300,000 plus people and no one ever talked about it because it was happening at the same time as woodstock um of course the in the anthony bourdain film sorry uh, not describe a couple of these um it was by anthony bourdain's life and just kind of like his life on the road and just how complicated it was and just you know there's relationships that he had throughout his entire life and we kind of get the perspective from all of his friends and family and the sparks brothers is about a band that i've never even heard of and i feel dumb but i love those type of documentaries because open up my eyes to something new and so that it did so those are the four uh documentaries that i'm going to be going over so sit back relax get comfortable Let's go over all of them. So the first one, I'm just going to do them in order uh, uh, that I watched them. So the first one is the Sparks Brothers. And like I said, this one is directed by Edgar Wright. And here's my unpopular opinion. Uh, you know how Edgar... Oh, come closer. You know how Edgar Wright did two films last year? Uh, th this one and uh, The Last Night in Soho? I prefer this one. I know. Sacrilegious. Anyways, uh, the Sparks Brothers is about a... A, mu a musical odyssey through the through five weird and wonderful decades with Ron and Russell um, Mail uh, celebrating the uh, inspiring legacy of Sparks. So it's a it's a brother combo. Uh, one sings, one did the keyboard. They were funny. They were uh, current with like musical trends while also like being trendsetters and doing their own thing. They were just a unique force in the music industry and watching this documentary and just getting like a full scope of like what they do i still don't know if they're geniuses or if they are just a gimmick like if they were just trolling everyone they kind of reminded me of like andy kaufman andy kaufman is such a weird and bizarre individual um i feel like these guys are like the musical equivalent of that where it's like they are so themselves and they just stay true to their uniqueness and weirdness and uh, uh just um and as an audience like we're just curious like because we want to see like what they do next because they're just just so out there um it just makes them really interesting to watch and just to see like what kind of music they come out with and what are their songs going to be about you know what's the meaning behind them is there meaning uh all that stuff i found it really intriguing i think edgar wright did a really great job kind of compiling all the you know concert footage and just interviews with them and people that they have worked with and and just like any other like musical band biopic and drama this one's got a bunch of uh drama uh as well real life drama with people leaving the band you know them jumping around labels trying to figure out like what they want to do because they don't want to become commercial they just want to stay themselves and like but they were blowing up it's just it, it's got all the the ripeness for that type of drama so it, it keeps that kind of interesting as well but these are two individuals that um are like firecrackers and like you just want to just see what's what's going to happen and they, they're just kind of unpredictable and i i like that they just are a pair of guys that have really great personalities even if some people don't understand it but just kind of understanding their their lives and their perspectives and their music and just feeling uh this passion through their musical uh, artistry while also getting a sense of like who they are and 
realism they're they're just two guys that just love making music and they don't care how they do it they don't care if they're big or not they just want to do it and they want to do it their own way and they just go by the beat of their own drum and that's the best way to describe it but uh, also just from a uh, filmmaking perspective this thing just like with most Edgar Wright films it moves like a bullet it's it's very highly uh, edited super energetic and it just really keeps that rhythm going it is the uh, longest documentary that I have on this list. It's two hours and 20 minutes. Very, very long. Didn't feel like that. I, I was really impressed that the 140-minute uh, runtime was able to keep up and really just kind of keep you uh, fascinated in these two gentlemen's lives and their careers. And they're still doing music to this day. Um, and this is, is crazy because a lot of people in the uh, interviews, uh, which, by the way, I really like how simple, uh, simplistic it was. It was just in front of a... I think it was in front of a green screen and it was just in black and white. <laughs> uh, that, that, that was about it. But um, because you know what? I, I think uh, I think these two guys wouldn't want it to be snazzy or fancy. They would want it to be as bare bones as possible. So I respect the choice. But um, yeah, I had never heard of them. And there was an interview in the documentary that was explaining that they were huge, but like no one ever like knew who they were. <laughs> like, it was really uh, crazy to think about. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I was introduced to these uh, two guys. I actually like their music. It's very hypnotic and and weird, and but you can't like not look away, like because you just don't know what they're gonna say next, and they're unpredictable, and that's what makes them exciting, <laughs> not like just some random boring duo. Um, so yeah, I, I I love this one quite a bit. And so. Sparks Brothers, I would recommend it uh, from Focus Features. That is the documentary that they're going to push heavily. And also this one that we're about to talk about, The Roadrunner, uh, a film by Anthony Bourdain. This is also from Focus Features. So these are the two ones that they're going to try to push heavily. So uh, Roadrunner, uh, a film about Anthony Bourdain, is directed by Morgan ne uh, Neville, which if you've never heard of that name, uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Uh, the Mr. Rogers documentary, which absolutely crushed me when I saw it. Uh, and the power of the Mr. Rogers film. Oh, I'm going to tear up just even thinking about this. Um, it was at uh, the film festival here in Dallas. Um, I was sitting there, and there was a kid next to me. And I think it was his mom or his sister or someone that was you know just looking after him on the other side. And he was talking to her and he was uh kind of explaining like hey like i'm i'm too young like i don't really know like the significance of mr rogers or the power that he brought to people's homes just through a television screen i just i'm not aware of that um and by the end of the film the kid was crying like he straight up was just so emotionally invested and uh keep in mind at this point i forgot to mention i think, I think the kid was blind so he was just hearing everything that was in the documentary and he was feeling that kind of like love and that positivity from Mr. Rogers. It, it was emotionally overwhelming for him. And I was like, that is the power of that documentary. And Morgan Neville was the, the director. So, um, and so now he's going to tackle uh, Anthony Bourdain, which, to be quite honest, is a, a complete 180 flip from, uh, from Steve, Rod or Steve Rogers. My God, I got, got Captain America on the mind. Um, <laughs> Mr. Rogers. Oh, guys, it's early. Um, so, yeah, going from Mr. Rogers to Anthony Bourdain, it, this character study is going to be a little bit more wild, um, a little bit more untethered, but definitely more fascinating, more, more layers and more depth to a man that was very... Um, very popular. He was he was all over the place on television, um, you know, movies, whatever. But there was a lot that we didn't know about him, and a lot of stuff that he shielded away from friends and family. And like he was very open about certain things. Anthony Bourdain was a um, uh, a heroin addict, turned his life around, um, tried to become a chef that worked, and then he took off and did his show, and he just became a household name, and he uh kind of transfixed on working so much like that became his addiction and ultimately his downfall uh because he he did push away a lot of people 
doesn't mean he was a bad person. He just let it take hold of him. Um, and like I said, I, I'm going to be very careful. Like I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bash Anthony Bourdain. There's no reason to do that. Um, uh, cause the man has passed on. Um, but even though he, uh, he was beloved by a lot of people and he, he brought a lot of, um, wisdom and just, uh, personality to people's lives. There was a lot of darkness that was within him. And that's okay to say, like, we're all complex as human beings and, he was also complex, and I think that's what makes his character study even more important. And I'd say Mr. Rogers, just because we, we don't know anything. And so, with this documentary, we get a little bit more of an insight into how he thinks, because we see a lot of behind-the-scenes footage that was acquired from his shows, uh, Parts Unknown, um, The Eating Show, and one other one I forgot. I never watched his shows, just full transparency. I always knew about Anthony Bourdain just through uh, interviews or um, some clips that you would find online, but I never watched any of his shows. But anyways, we get to see a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff, and we get to see a lot of, of, about how his mind works and how he he wants to do good in the world, but also there's something eating away inside of him that he can't really control, he can't really express, and it's really hard for him to tell people how he feels and, um, and his, one of his fears was being alone. And so he pushed people away, but also he, he needed some type of like stability in his life. And he was just losing control very, very fast, uh, while also doing the show, eating, go around the world and talking with people and just understanding uh, human perspective from the other side of the world. So once, this, once again, this guy's life was just, it was rich. It was complex. It was fulfilling in some points it was low at some points he was living the human experience for sure um but this one was it just like with won't you be my neighbor very emotionally powerful uh especially when we get to the last remaining years of his life and where it kind of went and uh with certain people and you're you're probably thinking like that's probably what um pushed him to ultimately take his life it, it just a very it's very sad for sure. It ends on a, a, a little funny note just because Anthony Bourdain does have a dark sense of humor. So it kind of fits with his, his personality and his, uh, his character. But yeah, just hearing from all of his friends and his family talk about how much they love him while also being pissed off of Adam, you know, for, for taking his life and doing that and like just ripping himself out of their lives, especially with like his daughter and everything. It's just a roller coaster of emotions of, Loving him one second and then in the same breath, um, hating some of the things that he said. And so, um, I, I what I took away from it was that Anthony was a good person, and he definitely um, he had issues like like we all do. Um, and it seemed like he was going to turn around on some some points of those, but just ultimately it um, it consumed him, and it's really it was really sad to see. But knowing that he, most of his life was documented and it will be forever. For people to see and for people to discover him and places to go around the world and in communities of people that um, uh, br just bring out like a, just a lot of hope and just having him talk with people that just seem like genuinely good people and I don't know you I, I kind of like that I like I like him going through all places around the world and just talking with people and just understanding their perspective on politics or, or food or just life in general like. He was always a curious person, and that, um, that I, I really respect that. So yeah, I, I really love this one quite a bit. Um, dude, Morgan Neville, he's 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 great documentary. He's probably can doing those, you know. So <laughs> this one and Won't You Be My Neighbor, I think you guys should both check out. Um, so Roadrunner, film about Anthony Bourdain from Focus Features. They are pushing this one as well. The next one is from Amazon Studios. This is the one I think they're going to probably push the most. They have a lot of documentaries on their service right now from last year, but I would push this one heavily. Um, this one is Val, and this one uh, focuses on Val Kilmer, and it's centering on the daily life of Val Kilmer, featuring never-before-seen footage sp spanning over 40 years. Incredible. Val Kilmer was the original YouTube <laughs> and vlogger before that was even a thing. He um, he recorded everything uh, when he was on set, when he was at home, um, when he was out and about doing nothing. 
The guy was just recording. Um, and I love that because now we get beautiful documentaries like this. It's directed by Ting Poo and uh, Leo Scott. Um, and I like this one too uh, quite a bit. This one is a... I've seen a lot of complaints online that it's just like, oh, it's just like a home video compilation. Like, that's all it is. There's really no substance behind it. I disagree. Uh, I think this is... Um, it's just a wonderfully open and kind of raw look into this man's life. And it doesn't feel like a documentary. It feels like the truest form of like an autobiography told in a visual form. Um, Cause you know, documentaries are planned. And so, and this was planned too. This was a planned documentary, but this foot, this footage that we're seeing, it was not planned. It was just Val being Val living life. He was enjoying uh, his life and just his career and, the ups and downs, like he wanted to record all of that. And it feels very in the moment. It feels, like I said, very raw and genuine and just kind of upfront. It doesn't feel like it was staged or planned. It's just like, this is life. This is what this man went through with his experience. And we're getting to see it. We're getting to see it in its truest form. And there was something quite beautiful about that. Also, it is intercut with um, uh, footage of a crew following Val now. Um, and Val Kilmer was unfortunately tapped with, um, throat cancer. Uh, he had it removed, but with all the radiation and stuff, it's permanently damaged his voice. Um, well, I wouldn't say permanently. He, he said in the documentary that he doesn't know if it's going to come back, but for right now it is not. So he's got to use one of those things where you speak through the, the hole in the throat. And so some of my, uh, uh, not, I wouldn't say favorite moments. I mean, they were they were really heartbreaking moments, but like they were like, I think they were the ones that made me just appreciate Val Kilmer more because when you see these like celebrities, like in movies and interviews and stuff, like we see like them as the celebrity, we see the, the image that we put in our heads of what these people are and seeing him be vulnerable on camera, expressing that he loves meeting his fans, going to these screenings, going to comic con, but at the same time, these people are coming to see Val as what they saw growing up in the movies and not Val now. And he doesn't feel confident about himself, especially with like the throat thing and everything uh, and having to talk like that. Cause he has to make a decision whether to breathe or to talk. So you have to like, kind of like constantly move your finger on your throat. He just doesn't feel confident about himself, but he wants to do it for his fans. So he's constantly battling that. And that really got to me because that really just kind of showed us a different side to him and really just showed that once again, yeah, they're celebrities, but they are people just like everyone else. They have insecurities. They have things that they hurdles that they have to overcome. Um, and just kind of seeing that and him just being just a full on just human being was beautiful. And I really, like I said, I really like those parts, even though they're super heartbreaking. Um, but I, I, that's another thing I love about Val is that he loves his fans. He loves going to these screens. He loves going to Comic-Con. He loves people that appreciate him and um, work like Tombstone or The Doors or even Batman Forever. Like, they don't care. They just love him. And so I, I felt that love. I felt um, I felt that the, uh, the, the fans of his loved him as much as he loved them. So I really like that. Yeah, it's just a it's a really great kind of home home movie documentary hybrid of a man that yes we we have seen quite a bit in movies and stuff, but we don't really know much about. And I think this documentary um, shows us a little bit more of an insight into who Val is and how what he thinks and you know what what kind of uh, life he had before he he started his career because there there was some tragedies that happened in his family and also really sad it shaped him and it kind of pushed him into a specific line of work and like he wanted to do it for his brother and it's just yeah it's just really good i i have nothing else more to say i've i've just enjoyed all of these documentaries that i'm talking about but this one's on uh, amazon prime video if you want to give it a shot uh val uh documentary about val kimmer i really liked it i wish it was I, w I wish there was more to it it was like an hour and 49 minutes but uh i was just like once it once I got uh, you know just kind of like uh, emotionally invested, I was like, oh man, I really wanted 
wanted more, but um, you know, what we got was was fine. Um, all right, so the next one and the last one I'm gonna talk about is Summer of Soul or When the Revolution Could Not Be Televised. This one uh, is a feature documentary about the legendary 1969 Harlem Cultural Festival, which celebrated African American music and culture and promoted Black Pride and unity. Directed by Questlove, uh, if you don't know who he is, uh, drummer on the He's still in Jimmy Fallon, right? Um, yeah, I, I think it's Jimmy Fallon. I don't watch the late night shows anymore, but yes, yeah, directed by Questlove, and yeah, I um, I never knew this was a, a festival. Um, and to be quite honest, if I was alive back in the day and I was living in New York, I would go to this one. <laughs> it looked like so much fun, and I really appreciated um, Questlove getting all this footage and putting it together and showing the world because. He claims in the documentary that this footage has not been seen for 50 years. So the whole festival was filmed, but then he, um, I, I don't know who he talked to or what, how he found it, but he found the footage and he stitched it together. And so this is a, a great blend of seeing the footage from the festival, getting interviews from people that were participating in the festival, um, patrons that were watching the musicians, and also getting their perspective on uh, what it was like with segregation and oppression uh, back in 1969 in New York, because it was definitely um, really bad at that time. And so having this concert go on while all that was going on at the same time, it was just a, uh, a powerful message for everyone in this community to kind of get together and show their... their um, passion and love through music while also a, a catharsis and like their anger of what they're feeling on the streets and like what they're seeing in their community with like the drug addiction and the police beatings and all this stuff it's just like all of this emotional swelling with all the musicians is poured out to hundreds of thousands of people and you can feel that intensity from every single performer that quest love shows and he doesn't just show like a clip for like 10 seconds and then cuts back to an interview. He lets us marinate in this music. In this, he, he gives us like full on like three to five minute numbers. And I, for me personally, I love this type of music. Kind of, um, someone described it in the documentary. They were like, it's like soul, uh, jazz, funk, pop. Like it's, it's like a bunch of different genres kind of mixed together. Um, and it was, it was a really unique experience. Everyone from like the drum solos, Stevie Wonder had a, a keyboard solo that was <laughs> freaking insane. Um, a lot of group bands that had some really nice uh, melodic kind of tunes. And like, I just, I loved uh, hearing their voices. It was very soothing. Um, a lot of uh, really powerful ones towards the end that had a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of like political messaging and stuff that just really kind of hit home and you can just feel that frustration um, and the pain that some of them were going through. Um, but like I said, at the same time, you're also feeling the passion and the creativity and the, the, the music just flowing through them and just pouring out and, and just seeing everyone have a good time. It's such a positive experience to just see everyone just enjoy themselves. And like I said, if I was living in New York at that time, I would totally attend that festival. Um, I, I, like I said, I love that type of music. It's just very, very smooth. Just like you, you feel calm when you listen to it. Just, I don't know. You feel at peace. And, um, I really just liked watching all this footage. So yeah, I think Questlove did a great job, um, mixing in, uh, what was happening at the time politically, um, uh, and racially and everything. And then what, what was happening, um, at this festival at the same time. And this was never done again. This was like a one and done thing, but it had, I think, did they say it had more people than Woodstock? I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember, but it was happening at the same time as Woodstock. And obviously Woodstock was the one that was documented for the, the whole world, but, um, they should have, yeah, they should have uh, definitely televised this one. I mean, every time when they cut to a crowd shot, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that's so many people in that park. It's insane. But that just shows you just how strong that community was and just um the support that they wanted to throw behind all these artists and everything and how can i not just put a smile on your face um 
I, I loved it. I, like, like I said, all four of these guys. Oh, and by the way, this one is on Hulu. Um, I don't know if Fox Searchlight is going to push this one. I think this is the one they're heavily pushing for um, awards consideration. So fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, Summer Soul was uh, pretty good. Guys, I uh, all four of these were fantastic. And I think uh, if you were looking for a documentary to watch, uh, I would watch these four. I would recommend any one of them. Um, they range from weird and bizarre, like the Sparks Brothers, to a really complex character study, like Anthony Bourdain, and a very vulnerable, kind of open, autobiography, raw uh, style, like Val, or just a really kind of slice of life and time in history that not a lot of us know about, like Summer of Soul. So, all types of documentaries out there, but let me know down below which ones have you seen, and please comment down below which ones you would uh, recommend as well that I missed from 21, uh, 2021. But that will do it for uh, these reviews, guys. I'm Chase Lee, and tune in next time for whatever I review next. I will see you guys later.